um, I'm going to introduce to you another instrument of ours, which is known as the Pū Tōrino. Pū Tōrino is definitely unique to the Māori people. Um, I have done a lot of history about ind indigenous instruments around the world. I have quite a collection of them myself, and I have never come across anything as unique as a Pū Tōrino. Not trying to be biased or anything, but they are not only look absolutely beautiful, the history of them, the story behind them, and the sound is quite rich and quite, quite deep and soulful. So I'm going to take you through a quick history of the Pū Tōrino and its background, its genealogy, and the goddess that it relates to. Okay, the Pū Tōrino shape takes after the shape of a cocoon. And this cocoon's only around about this big. And inside lives a female moth. This female moth lives in there all her life. And then only comes out to sing. When she comes out to sing, only the head, the feelers, and then she'll sing. Now, it might be hard to comprehend, but this singing could be heard by the old people. And they said that it was the most beautiful sound they'd ever heard and they personified this moth as Hineroka Todi, the goddess of music. It's very unique, the style of the way we play our instruments. There is no wind split, like normal flutes, there's no reed. Um, you have to create a wind split yourself. So the basic technique of playing any Māori instrument is blowing off the side. So whether you're playing from the end or from the middle, what will happen is that to get the female voice, which is known as waiata tangi, you have to play off the side. Blowing your wind half in and half out creates a wind split, therefore making a sound. The male voice in Māori is known as kōkiri. Kōkiri is like a signal to move forward or attack or go, you know.
play for you now is something pretty unique and that they are known as Pākohe or Resonance Rocks. So I'll just let them speak for themselves and I um, hope we get some good sound from this. Okay, these, this is the biggest of our instruments, they're known as pūkaya. Pūkaya are war trumpets. War trumpets would signal here we come or here they come and uh, you're in imminent danger, um, get to your safe places or you know, do what you have to do to keep safe. Pūkaya is a war trumpet, a pūkaya is saying here we come or here they come, imminent danger, beware. They were also used in other significant occasions, like the birth of a significant chief or chieftainess, someone of high rank. Maybe they were also used to signal long-range messages, almost like Morse code, you know. It would be heard from quite a distance. Um, also used to um, open new buildings like a whare tūpuna or an ancestral house. But any significant occasion these days, they are not used for war. In fact, um, they are more used these days for more joyous occasions. In some places, the pukaya was held in two halves until there was going to be a birth of a significant ancestor. When this ancestor was born, the tohunga or the shaman would come. He would place the instrument back together and start binding. With every bind, he would then recite the whakapapa or the genealogy of that child all the way back to the creator. So with every bound, he's reciting the ancestor, that boy or that girl's whakapapa on the father's side. Every bind is a name of a person or a deity coming down in that child's genealogy. Now, after you name the father of the baby, the baby would just come out. At that time, the tohunga and the shaman will go and aim this instrument to the heavens and sound the instrument to the heavens. This would then alert all this baby's tūpuna or ancestors that are in the heavens that he has just finished reciting all of their names. And he's now telling them that they have a moral and spiritual obligation to take care of this child that comes from them. So, um... Thank you. 